because the meter and ice hats look exactly the same. So I feel like there were takes where a meter wore my hat and it would be like slipping down, <laughs> down to over here. And when I put Freddy's hat on, all he could see was my lips. <laughs> Question one, who's got question oh, one? Oh, I do. Of course you do. <laughs> I mean, it's um, the best comedy value. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And mock the gods until they need them. Hmm, who says that? I guess it's, it's you. <laughs> no, it's you. No, it's me. It's <laughs> you. <laughs> Who would survive the fold? <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just the only word that popped into my head. <laughs> I would introduce myself as Google. O prazer é todo meu. As Google. Came in so high. Oh, and then no. so far. There we go. I was Ten. just testing you guys. Right, I'm sure. Yeah. Who is the sharpest comedian or, or who makes us laugh? Or, or, or who do you laugh uh, at the most? <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. Weird. I'm sure there aren't any more surprises. <laughs> cool, well done. I think it's Mr. Brecker over there. Sounds like something I could say. <gasps> yeah. No, it's no. me! Oh. <laughs> I laugh more at a meter than I do myself, so I'm going to say Mr. <laughs> 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 you know what, Freddie did make a really good banana bread yeah. in um, in Budapest and I've been trying to make banana bread ever since because it was so good, but it's not as good as his, very, so I'm very not going to lie. A metre, 100%. A yeah. Yeah. In, what, yeah. in whatever sense, it's a metre. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one scene uh, with, with Freddie, um, you know, it was this heartfelt scene uh, and we'd be talking and sharing our emotion and then in the background you just hear, bah! <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Yes! yes. Oh, yeah. Stevie! Yeah. Whatever he These says. Are all correct. <laughs> These are all correct. PJ, we've got Peters in there, we've got Stevie, and what Freddie says. <laughs> it's also right. It's, it's always right. right. I put the good place. Nice. No one will believe me, but I actually have the good place. Oh, I don't believe No, you. Yeah. stop copying me! You couldn't train a falcon and then expect it not to hunt. I know. Uh, I, but now I know that you said that. Um, <laughs> that's, 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 that's probably you then. Meter. Um, oh yeah, meter. Yeah. Yeah. Meter. Oh, that's that's really yeah. great. Long, long, pretty impressive. Yeah. My all-time favorite character in Shadow and Bone is the goat. You shouldn't objectify a living being like that. He's not an object. He's, he's, he I'm has not a soul objectifying his him. Name is I mean, he pooed everywhere. But that was I. I really marvelled at that. I also had a goat. Friday. It's an edge. Yeah, it's an edge. That's a yeah. good bet. I wouldn't thought that was a very, it's a very Kazi. It is. She's learning from the best. Amita was um, teaching us some Bishburi on one of our last days on set, oh, and yeah. Freddie's accent was so on point. It really was. Hmm. I definitely think it's Kit, and I definitely oh. also think it's Freddie. <laughs> Yay! Oh. Just turn up. <laughs> yeah. right there, yeah. I was like correcting something you said a second ago. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Childish jokes. <laughs> Definitely true. I don't see myself as um, as an edge in the thingy because because I love the book so much and I love honestly I'm like the number one fan of an edge. I already had like a um, creation of her in in my head uh, which wasn't me because I hadn't got the part yet. Yeah, Amita, you're you're missing out. You have got to read it again and picture yourself. It's I'd <laughs> that is it. Oh wow! Oh, okay, I've, I've got. got a few more. Oh well. Wow. Okay. Do you want one? Do you want oh, one no, of mine? You just... I haven't. I have one of mine. I've not looked. I've not looked. Do you want one of mine too? No, I'm not doing all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What did you get? Congratulations! You survived the journey through Jenny, the shadow. Journey through the fold. Yes, of course the crows would make it. I did. Just... I died. <gasps> Kid, did you not make it? Um, obviously, Freddy. Yes, I have a whole collection of uh, of faulty knives that I would love to put in a frame and uh, uh, serenade my house with when I move into it because <laughs> um, I'm currently staying in an Airbnb. Um, but in it's funny because the because they're I don't want to call it a love interest because it's sort of it's more of more like a magnetic pull that they have towards each yeah. other. When I finished reading the books I thought their relationship was 
so magical and so unique. It's so burn in the books. It's so sort of um, difficult for them both because they have all this trauma and they're kind of so bad at talking about their feelings to each other. <laughs> um, such a slow burn and Amita and I really wanted to sort of honour that and sort yeah. of keep sort of slow thing. And it's very rare you read a relationship where it's such a guttural, internal, intense kind of feeling. And it all happens in the eyes and it all happens in the stomach and the heart um, instead of with the words or the physical touch or a kiss or, you know, anything like that. But for him to admit by the end of the season that he needs her around, you know, he sort of is, is, is huge. And it takes a full eight episodes for him to get to, to, to that point. What's really beautiful was that we both cared about the relationship so much and we both wanted to respect, you know, the fans and what Lee had written. And, you know, we appreciated everything that everyone else appreciated about the relationship. And I think the challenge was how do you you know, show this chemistry without, like I said, without saying, oh, I like you or I like the way yeah. you smile or without holding someone's hand or, you know, giving them a hug. But I think they just have one of those relationships where their actions speak louder than their words. Um, so, yeah, I sort of, I, I have seen people shipping, shipping mm -hmm. cats, um, which, is, which is very nice and exciting because, you know, Amita and I worked quite hard on, on getting that chemistry right. Because it, it shouldn't be sort of so blatantly obvious. It should um, yeah. should be something maybe on a second watch you go, oh yeah, maybe maybe he did need her from the start. He just didn't want to admit it. I remember my audition scene um, and it was her speaking to Kaz about only taking down the bad guys and not the good guys. And how Kaz has, you know, questionable um, intentions and... I think in that moment for her, she, she has this wonderful quality of seeing the good in life and seeing the good um, in people. And I knew that in that moment, Inej knew that it was worth saving this man because he is one of a kind and he really has a difference to make. And especially Ketadam, um, Ketadam needs a, a Kaz Brecker. And you know, their traumas as well it kind of inhibits them to be this way with one another but also right now you know they haven't been working for long together mm -hmm. and i think they're figuring their feelings out and they're realizing what they mean to one another and perhaps that they're po more powerful together yeah. um but it's for me it was all it was all in the eyes yes. I, I i don't know he, he was he was just such an incredible scene partner. Yeah, I think like like Amita said, it was a real watershed moment for both characters. I think even though it's Inej who does the killing, it's a it's a huge moment for Kaz, who up until that point has sort of wanted to believe that she could be his right hand woman, but actually, if she can't kill, she can't do it, and then she does it. And not only does she do it, she does it for him. Mm. And so we go back into this incredibly confusing thing for Kaz, <laughs> which is what what is this feeling that I have for her? You know. Because now I know I can fully trust her. Now I know that she would literally kill for me. And I know that I would do the same for her. And it sort of goes into this big pot of emotions that Kaz has absolutely no idea what to do with. Um, <laughs> and sort of, yeah, adds to that confusion. So it's such a pivotal watershed moment for the pair of them. Yeah. But of course they don't talk about it and sort of it remains under the surface and bubbling away for it for another day. So when me and Freddie, we, you know, we didn't have any chemistry reads or anything like that. Wow, he was cast and I was cast. So you were just in the cold. That's incredible. In the cold. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I was really anxious to see, you know, who was going to be playing him. And I remember we were meeting um so, uh, Eric and Lee and I knew Freddie was going to come in that day so my heart was going like a thousand miles an hour because I get really nervous I'm getting hot already thinking about it <laughs> um, and he walked through the door with this huge smile such a calm energy and just these big beautiful blue eyes and I thought I, I, I was really happy that we didn't have to you know have a chemistry read because he really for me anyway he was the perfect Kaz Brecker um so when we came together in Budapest you know we just geeked out over the books we discussed we hung out with the rest of the cast and got to know one another and what was